welcome to another episode at Economics Design. Today we're going to talk about something different. Instead of the usual DeFi or usual layer one, layer two blockchain platforms, we are going to focus on play to earn games. I want to start talking about this because we have a big report we shared and researched and published on the primer of how to design the economics of play to earn games or the economics of blockchain games. Before we get started, what is this core premise that we're talking about? When we're talking about blockchain games or just games in general, we're really talking about a market. A market is where people come together to trade and transact. They could be building guilds, they could be doing, they could be going on tournaments, they could be doing different, different battles. But these are all different types of transactions between agents. And every time these transactions happen, value is being created. So what we're talking about here is as a game, we're talking about a market. In a market, value is being created. If value is not created in a market, people don't find value in coming to your market, people just leave. A market exists because it provides value to the users who are transacting on the market. That being said, why do we need this paper? Why do we need this research? Because these markets are very, very complex. It's a lot more complex than DeFi, which is already complex. In play to earn games or in blockchain games, or just games in general, you have so many different kinds of interactions, transactions, activities that can be done to create value for your users in the game, your gamers, your, your developers, your investors, different kinds of people in your game. So what we're looking at in this paper is to understand, is there a, is there a model or a framework to start designing the economics of the game? Because in games, there are two things that's really, really complicated. The first one is the aesthetics of the game, the gameplay, how things are done, how things are designed, how do you render graphics in your computer. The second thing that's also very difficult to nail down, which is, I guess it's a little bit harder, is the economics of these complex games. It's the economics of how these different assets or agents or transactions that is flowing within your economy. That's also very complicated. And I don't know how to do the first one in game design as in designing the aesthetics and rendering of games, but I do have some insights of figuring out how the economics of these games work. So together with Lemnis Cap and four other researchers, we have Luca, Dan, Denali, and John Marco. All of us came together to create this paper, which is a primer for blockchain games. And it is very, very interesting. I want to share that with you. Moving forward, we can use this as a framework to start applying them to analyze the various kind of games that's out there. The reason why I say the word framework, not model, is that there is no one model that fits all the various games in the world. A model is something that's fixed. A framework is, uh, is something that you can use as reference to start building your game. So there is no one model that fits all games. Unfortunately, I really wish there was, but at least we have a framework and I'm going to share this framework with you. We use this framework to analyze 12 different games from all the way from complex games, very different kind of complex games, different great game strategies and game mechanisms. We use this framework to analyze them and understand how the framework can be applied and then come up with a summary that you can use. And the reason why we created this is mainly in two folds. The first one is the primary primary reason. It's for designers and developers. As I mentioned, designing a game, designing game aesthetics, game visuals, rendering of game, very complicated, very, very difficult. People who can do that, great job. Now you have that. You need to design the gameplay, the economics of the game works. Is there too, many, too much coins? Is there too little coins? Is there overinflation or hyperinflation in your game? That's very important because that will help your game to be sustainable in the long run. This framework is to help game designers, game developers to design the economics of the game. The second people that we, we hope to target are investors because blockchain games are quite new. And how do you want to analyze and figure out the, the games? or how do you want to evaluate the games are quite complicated and quite difficult. So hopefully this becomes a primer and a basic framework for you to start understanding and analyzing the robustness of these games. So let's get started and dive deep into the various topics. The first section of the report talks about the various personas. So again, we talk about markets, a market where users come together to trade and transact. Now, we can do that, we can create markets, we can figure out a lot of things to trade and transact because we can design them on their own, on, on our we can design them as developers. But who are these people coming to trade? And we've identified five key personas of people who come into trade. Players, builders, developers, investors, as well as collectors, NFT collectors. So these are the five core personas that we see in P2, P2E games or blockchain games. This framework can also be used for non-blockchain games and you potentially do not have your NFT collectors, but or maybe your investors will be a very different kind of investor. But Understanding the personas that you have in the game will be very important because everything else we do after, 
these other these other components of the framework will be applied to these personas. So section one or segment one of the report talks about the various personas and diving deep into who the personas are and what they do. But just in general, the developers, the players, the builders, and the investors as well as collectors. Then we start moving into the framework. Do you remember the framework that we've always used? Market design, mechanism design, and token design. Market design is designing the parameters of the game. So agents, economic agents or, or user personas are one of them. Then we also want to understand what are the other components that are the parameters of the game. The second one is mechanism design. These are the rules. The rules in the game that you embed, these are economic policies, economic rules. These are rules in the game. And lastly, we have token design. Token design, more specifically, the monetary policy of the game. Of course, we can expand further into looking at NFTs as tokens, but in general, the idea is monetary policy. So let's take a little dive into each of these and what do they mean? When we talk about market design, we're looking at three things. UGC, user generated content, we look at NFT and in-game usability, as well as the value creation, value sinks, and value distribution. Again, rem remember, market design is the various parameters that we have in the game. So we talk about UGC. UGC is user-generated content. Some games allow users to generate their content. Some games allow some certain type of users to generate content. And some games do not allow ge generation of content at all. So for example, take a look at Sandbox. Sandbox is a game, it's kind of like the crypto version of Minecraft and users can generate their own content, build their own infrastructure and build their own bridges, build their own skyscrapers to play in the game. Some games like Star Atlas, they do have a level of user generated content instead of the user as, the, as in the players generating content, it is the developers themselves generating content as time goes by. And some games just do not have user generated content at all. There is no right or wrong, just understanding, having awareness of these various components of the things that can be customized, cannot be customized, is going to be important in the game. The second thing we talk about in market design is NFTs and in-game usability. NFTs is quite a big component of this entire play to earn game. The NFT can be in terms of vanity items like skins, or the NFT could be something that generates a form of income or uh, some some form of asset in your system. So it could be land, it could be spaceship, it could be a robot suit, it could be a gun, it could be a racing track. Whereas the vanity item is more of the skins. So like the design of how you design your, your robot costumes in your game or how you design your battleship in your game. So NFT, depending on the NFT and how it is being used, they help to define the parameters of your of your market design of your market and lastly it's value creation value sync and value distribution remember the first thing i talk about here as in why we need a market is that a market creates value value is being generated that's why a market exists what happens when you generate value the important thing is that it needs to be distributed it needs to be turned into real value and then it needs to be distributed to everyone in the game and then it needs to be sync as well because you have value creation and then you need some ways to reduce and sync the value. Otherwise, you have this thing called hyperinflation. Just like how in the economy, you have bust and booms, up and down, bear and and bull and bear, and good and bad. You also have similar kind of infrastructure within your economy. You can't keep going up, 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 up all the way. That's probably a Ponzi scam. You have different variations in your game because the market changes all the time and you need to be able to anticipate that market change. So understanding what causes value creation, value sinks, how do you distribute value, that's going to be very important. And when we talk about inflation, for example, it's not just currency inflation, but also asset inflation. So these are some components to think about when you're designing the parameters of your market. The second thing is mechanism design. The main things that we're talking about will be governance, revenue model, business model, and network effects. When it comes to governance, you know, governance is still a very, very broad topic and it's how you govern this entire system initially. Right now, I see that a lot of games, their long-term goal is to decentralize. Right now, they're still centralizing it, which is completely normal and completely fine. You need a level of centralization to bootstrap and kickstart your entire economy. Then you can start to slowly decentralize. That's completely normal. When we talk about revenue models, there are four kinds of revenue models we're looking at. Direct revenue model, rental, employee or scholarship, as well as asset. So direct revenue is, you know, getting money directly. Rental is renting your asset out. Scholarship is giving us 
giving scholarships or hiring someone to use your asset to work and then asset is just the asset generates revenue on its own so for example you have an nft that's a land and people get to use people pay you to use the land to make battles or fight or mine something then you get to earn tokens from there that's asset revenue so depending on the different kind of revenue models you have different ways of structuring your mechanism or the economic policies in your game that being said the other side of revenue model is your business model in business model we have two ends and then everything in between so one end is free to play and one end is pay to play there is no right or wrong it's just a, a different type of a different as a scalar of what kind of games there are so free to play is that anyone can come in to play the game pay to play is that you have to to pay to to participate in the game so and then you have everything in between depending on your business model you have very different kind of considerations for assets asset inflation currency inflation and the types of assets that you're giving out for free the other kind of business model the other kind of mechanisms or or just models in your system is pay to win that's a different kind of system as well where users can pay to win in your system or in your in your game again these are different kind of considerations because depending on how long you want your game to last you know is it is there fairness in the game is there are you rewarding or incentivizing certain kind of activities and actions whereas someone is someone is being the trade off of this entire of this entire activity or this entire transaction you know these are things to consider when you're choosing these models there is no right or wrong it really really depends on the models you're building and one other thing that i want to highlight in mechanism design is network effects so network effects is not something that is is fixed more importantly network effects goes to our segment one in in terms of user persona so understanding what personas they are how do they interact with each other and what are some considerations that we need to think about so for example the first user we had we talked about as players you want to understand what kind of interaction and relationship players have between each other players have with builders players have with collectors players have with developers players have with investors what kind of act economic activity do they do they interact or do they engage in what kind of transactions do they engage in when players interact with players when players interact with investors these are all the various permutations of economic activities and transactions that should be built into your model that should be built into your your rules of your economy of your universe hence this is mechanism design because this is rules of the game depending on what kind of economic activities they are you have different kind of rules for different kind of agents and lastly it's monetary policy so with monetary policy what we want to do ideally is to balance between inflationary and deflationary pressures that's literally what the fed does the federal reserve or central banks they are helping to manage inflationary and deflationary pressures and what what is the whole point of that ultimately what he wants to do is that you can translate the value created you know you as a user as a person going to tournaments using my robot or using my spaceship th there is value being created and i want to turn this into real value in the system or real value in my in my bank account and so this is where monetary policy comes in so to put it more concretely let's take a look at an example that luca has created and you can you can read more about it in the report that that we have and i'll link it above so what we see over here is an expansionary cycle of x infinity or just any any game in general and in, in a game usually we have we have the gamers and players builders these are the various economic economic users or economic agents and then we also have the nfts which are the goods being produced in the system so you take xc to breed xc's and then that's there's an nft and these are goods that's created in this xc con xc infinity economy so let's take a look at an an expansionary case study so we have the demand of of nfts the demand of of xc's these are local demand goods from your economy because of expansionary the demand pressure goes up more people want to buy this more people want to buy xc's more people want to buy nfts because you want to collect them or you want to play them because you buy xc with your native currency then the demand for your native currency increases so when the demand of nft native currency increases it attracts more people to come into the game so you have this as population growth and as more people come into the game because of the, how xc infinity works you also have new currency being minted new new native currency being minted into the system so it helps to reduce the pressure 
of the domestic currency inflationary. Basically, more people want to buy X infinity, more people demand the local currency to buy X infinity. The local currency increases in value. It, it attracts more people to come into the game to play. And because more people come into the game to play, it increases, it creates new native currency as well, and it helps to reduce this pressure. At the same time, as more people come into play, the secondary effect is also that they will start creating new NFTs, breeding new XE, increasing the breeding rate, and all the other aspects of increasing NFTs. So this increases the supply, which helps to dampen the demand. And then the supply and demand now will be matched. It will be equilibrium. And the demand here wouldn't be overheated. And so this becomes, becomes smoother and softer. So this is the general idea of the expansionary aspects. So what can we do with this? So what if we can figure out the entire life cycle of this economy? Well, the important thing is to understand what are some parameters that we can tweak so that we can allow this economy and this system to be stable, to be, to be sustainable. You see two impacts here. The first one is the strength of the local currency and the supply of the NFT. So this is your NFT farming, and this is your, your new, new tokens being minted in the native token sets. So what we look at over here are figuring out what are the various parameters that you can create within your system to make it easier to farm or harder to farm. So let's say there's a huge demand of NFTs and you're afraid of everything going overheating. You're afraid of crazy inflation in your system and we need to increase the supply of NFTs. We need to increase the supply of NFTs so that the demand of NFT is equalized. So what can you do? So you can, you can make the supply the supply of NFT, you can make it easier to increase the supply of NFT. So think of it as, you know, to create a supply of NFT, you need to do an exam. The easier the exam is, the more people pass, the more people pass, the more NFT is created. The more difficult the exam is, the less people pass, less, less NFT is being minted. So in the same way, if let's say right now you need a lot of NFTs to balance out the demand, you make your exam easy, anyone who goes through this stage will, will pass the exam and then more NFT is created. Let's say it's contractionary. You want to have you want to have less supply of NFTs. You make the exam harder. Less people able to pass the exam. Less NFT minted, and it helps to stabilize your economy. So this is what I meant by oh, this is what in general we we found out in the research that monetary policy is about balancing the supply and the inflationary and deflationary pressure. And to get to this point of inflationary and deflationary pressure, we need to go to mechanism design, which are rules of the game. What's the revenue model? What is the business model? What are What's the governance like? What is the network effects? How do users interact with each other? And before we go there, we need to figure out what are the parameters of the, of the market? Who are in the game? Who? What kind of UGC is there? What kind of NFTs are there? How is the NFT being used in the system? What is, how is network being distributed and created and shared and destroyed in your economy? And once you have all of these together, then you can start thinking about building a very robust economy. You can start thinking about mixing these various components together to start designing your economy. And then we move on to section three. In section three, we talk about, we talk exactly about that. How does value creation and value things will be linked to revenue creation that will be linked to monetary policy. So it basically just tries to tie everything together more in smaller chunks so that you don't get over overinflated in ideas in your head to make sense of what the entire report is doing. In the next section, we're going to talk about recommendations that Kifo will be bringing you through. In the recommendations section of the report, we outline a decision-making process that can help P2E game designers plan or investors to evaluate an economy. We display this process through these two flowcharts. The first question that we examine is, is it important that the NFT be actively used within that game? If not, you're free to distribute the income directly and passively, and this can increase the value of the NFT as more users are willing to purchase an asset that they don't have to actively manage. But if it is important that that NFT be actively used, then you should create the incentive by distributing the income based on that usage. Next, examine if there is a measure of player skill or strategy available. If so, it's preferable to distribute the income based on that measure, uh, as it better rewards the real players who make up the core of the economy, rather than those who are using bots or multiple accounts who are just trying to extract value from that economy. If not, you can distribute based on participation, but make sure to create some technical 
limitations to prevent those bots and other exploitative users. Going into the second chart, I want to look at if the goal is to have the game be accessible to a wide player base. If yes, I'd recommend leaning in the free-to-play direction, as even if you have a pay-to-play game with a scholar program, that's still more friction than a free-to-play game for onboarding new users with low bankrolls. If that's not as important, next one to look at is the game a player versus player or a player versus environment scenario. Uh, if it's a player versus environment and there's not as much um, conflict directly between players, uh, then you want to look at if the there is a reward loop within the game that is reliant on having drops of items with utility. If so, um, it means that there's an important component of the game uh, revolving around earning items to progress. And if players can just buy the best items, they may soon realize that they just took a lot of fun out of the game. And that can really undermine the whole process. And so it can be preferable in that case to make assets with utility non-tradable and focus the in-game economy or the real value economy around more cosmetic assets. But if this isn't uh, a really important component of the game and it won't undermine any of the fun, then you're free to make the assets with utility tradable. Uh, if you're going more in the PvP direction, you want to look at how acceptable is it for the game to be perceived as pay to win. This can be a problem in a lot of games with some users objecting to this. And so if that's something that should be avoided, look more in the free-to-play direction and having assets with utility be non-tradable. Though if pay-to-win is acceptable, then uh, you can make assets with utility tradable and lean more in the pay-to-play direction. And this is going to be a little bit more of a realistic economy. Although there is some kind of middle ground as well. If you have separate uh, areas within the game where in one area it's equalized and so no one has uh, an advantage for paying more. And then on the other side, the you can still create an incentive for whales to purchase assets by having a separate area where they can gain the full advantage. And lastly, the whole point of this is that GameFi is very complicated. It is not an easy topic, and that's why we chose, we took a very long time to start writing this very complex paper. This is not something that's just relevant to the on chain world, but it's also relevant to the off chain traditional game world. And this is really, really exciting and very interesting because right now we are in, in this, we are able to embrace technology to start building very new and very interesting kind of universes, mechanisms, markets, or economies. And this is very exciting because maybe there are new ways that we can start looking at, at markets. There are new ways in which we can start creating new interactions or new economic activities in a market. And we can do that with games. So I know there are, there are some people talking about how, you know, game is a scam, NFT is a scam, everything's a scam. The only thing that's real is gold bars. And I get that, you know, you have different kinds of opinions, different ideas. I think the thing that I want to embrace over here is that we are, we have the power, we have the tool today, we have the technology and tool today to start building and crafting the economic models that we would like to explore. We can start defining the economic policies in which we, we incentivize economic agents to come together to work and transact. And we can do this in a very fun way through games. And ultimately, it'd be really fun to start taking empirical data and study them to understand how these different economic, economic activities or economic markets work, because these are all very interesting systems. So I just want to share that this is a very interesting crossroad where we have the right tools and technology to start building new ways of value creation and value distribution. This is just the beginning, and I hope you download the paper to read it. Join us on our Twitter spaces, join us on our Discord, happy to chat anytime. And hopefully you find that it has a lot of value, just as I think it has added a lot of value to me as I did this research together with the entire team. So thank you very much and I'll speak to you the next time. Bye. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord, check out our Academy, and you get to watch these videos for free as well without any ads and also grab the book that i've talked about earlier on the book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build what we're trying to design and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process we also just launched econteric 
Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye.